Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and this podcast is all about tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. And from time to time, I have guests, as you're going to hear today. But I call this podcast, it's called Imagine Wealth Without Risk. And so we try to teach you ways that you can make money and not take a lot of risks. And I think that's one of the important things that is left out in life. Everybody says, be careful. So we're going to talk to people that have been careful and they do very well. So my guest today is a newspaper editor, and he's been one for many years, but he's a professional writer, and that's how we met through a company called Text Broker, which they only hired the best, and he was graded as the best, and I was lucky to connect with him, and now he's been snooping around the tax lien and deed business, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's been doing. So his name is Mr. B.R. Baker, and B.R., are you on with us today? I am here, Ted. Glad to hear from you again, sir. Oh, good. Welcome aboard, and let's have some fun and tell people, first of all, we want to lay a little groundwork because I want uh, them to know how credible you are. So can you give them a little background about yourself? I'm a professional journalist. I've been in newspapers for more than 30-something years. I've written articles for clients now in 38 countries. I've had work published all over the place. I actually have an article I wrote that's used in an Australian university in a public relations class. I've written 15 books to date, and I'm looking at a contract now to write a book for my accountant. He wants a book on farm planning and ag analysis and that kind of thing. How nice is that? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I hope he's going to give you a big advance. That's what authors always say. I got a big advance. So uh, I wish I could get an advance. Oh, you! All right. So you're like me. You got to work it out, right? I know. Yeah, I got to work for what I get. Yeah. I'll tell you a quick funny story. I did a book for John Wiley, uh, a big publisher in New York City, uh, a number of years ago. It was a bestseller. It uh, ended up in the bookstore, and it was there for 12 years. And finally, I, I went down to the bookstore. And I got one of them. I said, "This book's getting a little outdated." So I called him up on the phone and I said, um, gee, could you, what are you going to do? We, we got to take it out of the bookstore. I, uh, but if you want to do, redo it, we probably should think about that. Oh, Ted, we'd, we'd really like to, you to redo that because we've been selling it for 12 years now. And I said, well, that sounds great. I said, uh, do you offer me an advance? And the advance <laughs> was so low, <laughs> I had to gratefully just climb because I, uh, yeah. I, you know how it is. You just, you got to All you gotta too make well. Sense. Oh boy. So anyway, listen, tell me uh, about yourself, a little about your personal life. I know you, I know you donate time into the, to help people that got themselves in trouble at the prisons and so on. And uh, yeah, I'm a certified, a state certified prison minister. I have a ministry at what's called an RSET, Residential Substance Abuse Treatment Center here in my community. The gentlemen who go there are arrested for various chemical related Oh. Charges be like DUI, possession, that kind of thing. And the judge doesn't think they deserve to be sent to jail. He wants to give them some help, so he sends them there. And I decided that maybe I can help these guys get out of this place and turn their lives around and live better. And I've been doing that for 12 years now. Wow. I also sit on the board of directors for a food bank here in town. I'm on the board of directors for a chamber of commerce. I'm on the planning and zoning board. Wow. Ted, I just do a little bit of everything. We need a lot more people like you in our lives, that's for sure. Yes, we do. We do. You're helping a lot of people. Now, that that element is tough to handle. So you have that, uh, I guess I shouldn't say criminal element, but that, that uh, people that got involved in drugs. Now, are you a pretty strong guy that you can handle that thing, or, or did they treat you real good? How does that work out? It's I'm safer sitting in there than I am anywhere else. Your readers don't know, but in 2013, I survived an assassination attempt because of my work as a journalist. Really? A guy got mad about what I wrote, and he hired somebody to come and kill me. No, and when I man. go into the prison, yeah, it's and oddly enough, it was a finance related article that I wrote oh. that he was offended by. But when I go to prison, it's just cool. The guys there, they look to me like the father figure some of them never had. I'm somebody that's oh. tremendously respected. Oh. They look up to me, they listen to me, they look forward to my coming. And if I know that if something ever starts to happen there, I got 50, 60 guys between me and whatever else is taking place in the prison. I'm safe. Oh, wow. That's, wow. That was, uh, you couldn't have said anything nicer. That's really terrific. Wow. Gee, good for yeah. you. 
And that makes you feel good when you go home because there's yes. knowing that in the background. Now, you and I are connected because of your writing, and which I admire and respect, especially the way you always have a reference for everything you do. You're not one of these guys that just writes and says, oh, you're going to make a million dollars. You say, you're going to make a few dollars, but here's four other people that said the same thing. So you know, your chances are improved because a lot of people have done it. So I like the way you always have a reference and it's always a, a quality company and so on. So you got a little involved in this tax lien and tax deed business. So I'll get started by asking the first question. What made you get started? Take me back to where you actually started. Big profits, period. <laughs> Exclamation <laughs> point. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Big profits. Yeah. Um, it, you're looking at buying a house for literal pennies on the dollar. And you're buying this place because the owner, for whatever reason, chose to not pay his taxes. And here where I live in Georgia, the Peach State, you got two options. When you buy the taxes, the owner can redeem the property, and you earn 20% interest on your money, and he has 12 months to do that. Or at the end of 12 months, you file a foreclosure, and you get the property. Nice deal. Nice deal. That's great. Yeah, you're looking at a minimum 20%. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. No. Now, so tell me, first of all, how'd you get interested? Have you been knowing about this a long time or did, because we got together, did you start getting more interested or what happened? Actually, because I run the newspaper and I've been in newspapers all my adult life, I've known about these sales and because that we have to run them, they have to be run in the newspaper. I think that's a pretty standard thing across the nation in my research. Yes. And I see, I've seen these things for years and I said, yes, okay, sure. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and then you got in touch with me about this kind of stuff, and I started looking at it, and I'm saying, Ted's on to something here. I went to an auction just to see what it was like. Oh, and They're smart. done by a public auction here in Georgia. The auctioneer gets up, he announces the property, he announces the price, and he tells you what it's going to go for and that kind of thing, just to see what was going to happen, because you got to know your rules, and you got to do your homework. If right. you don't do your homework and you don't know the rules, you're going to be in trouble. Right. So I realized I could go to this auction and I could just sit there and watch and see what happens without spending any money. And it was amazing. And I said, these guys are buying houses for four and five hundred dollars here. Yeah. yeah. And then this blew me away. At the end of the auction, one of the guys who bought quite a number of the properties, the people who own the house came up to him immediately after the auction. Uh and paid him off on the spot. Ted, he hadn't even had time to write the check of what he had bought at the auction. No, and he was already being paid. Really? So they actually, that we we call that a redemption. So that means that they redeemed their property. In other words, they got their deed back. They redeemed the deed. And so what kind of profit did he make in the hours? He made a 20% profit. In the span of about 45, in the span of less than 45 minutes, the auction took right at 25 minutes, oh. and you figure another 10, 15 minutes to fill out the paperwork. Really? You do the math. He spent $4,500, as I remember, at that auction, wow. and he walked out with several six or 7000 in his pocket. Imagine that. In redemptions. Was he? His check was not even anywhere near clearing the bank. And he had money in his pocket to go cover that check, which he already wow. had, of course. But And he had profit in his pocket. Terrific. Just terrific. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. Now, so that was your first auction. That was yeah. uh, one of your first. You were, I've never done that. Seeing someone make money. And I, I have seen uh, people do it at the auction, but not get all the money that quick. So that's pretty, pretty – that was pretty astonishing. Then what it happened? was to me. Oh, yeah. I saw what happened, and I went to my next auction. And this was a city of Ashburn auction. In Georgia, three different boards are allowed to collect taxes. The county commission, the city council, and the board of education. Now, this is one of the rules you need to know in Georgia. Each one of these boards can collect property taxes. Wow. Each one of these boards can also have its own tax sale. So if you go to a city auction and you buy a property, you better hustle over to the courthouse and pay off the county taxes and the board of education taxes, too, because if you don't, that jeopardizes your investment. I see. What but the great awesome. thing is, yeah. when you pay these other taxes off, you get to earn 20% on them too. 
my goodness, this is amazing, isn't it? Now, I've taught for years that you always want to go to the county to do all this, but you're saying in Georgia, there's two other sources that yes. uh, jurisdictions, yes. call those, yes. two other jurisdictions that actually have tax auctions. This is yes. really inside, this is insider information, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I guess you could call it that. And legally, we're doing this. We're not doing anything that's not legal, but you know, my, my point yeah. is, I don't think most people know that. See, Georgia may be, Georgia is a different state. Every state has different rules, and every county within every state also has different rules. Georgia is one of those where each one of these agencies can do its own taxes. In Georgia, yeah. most of the cities do their own tax billings. I see. Most of the ed boards of education piggyback on the county. Oh, I that see. is okay. not the case right. everywhere. That's why you got to know the rules and do your homework. When you yeah. go out and research one of these properties, you need to find out if there are past due taxes from the county, from the city, and from a board of education. Now, of course, if the property is not located in a city, you don't have city taxes. I see. Okay. Now, where did you go to find all that information? I went to City Hall first because my second auction was a city auction. Oh. I went and talked to the city tax collectors. I found out, I saw the notice in the paper, which I published. Oh. I got a little inside information there. I get a couple of days <laughs> jump on oh, everybody yeah. else. Oh, good but it doesn't you. matter yeah. because they've got to run the announcement for four weeks prior to the auction. So oh, I really wow. don't have a leg up. I really don't. Made you feel and good I anyway. found out what the properties were. I looked at ones I wanted to buy. I went over to the courthouse and I said, all right, can you tell me if there are any past due taxes here? And here our board of education uses the county tax collector to bill their taxes. So I they see. told me what the county taxes were. Good. And I added the city bill to the county bill and came up with a total I knew I'd period have to spend. I came up with a bottom amount I would have to spend. That was a bare minimum. And then I started looking at my own finances and said, all right, I can bid this much on this property because I had that much in my bank account. And I said, I can spend this much and then we'll be good to go. And then I went to the auction. Great. great. And I got outbid. Oh, well, that happens. But I tell my students if they, if they uh, get out bid, come, come and cry on my shoulder. Don't feel bad because there's always another auction, right? There always is. Georgia requires tax auctions to be held on the first Tuesday of the month. Right. And that means some county in Georgia is having a tax sale somewhere. Every month you can find one somewhere in Georgia. And you don't even have to bid in Georgia. You can bid in any one of the states or District of Columbia. In the research I've done, there yeah. are dozens, literally dozens of tax auction sales held every week somewhere in the United States. And most people don't even know this. We, I create manuals with directories in them of all the counties. And of course, nowadays we can put that online. So we, mm -hmm. we have little external drives or thumb drives that people can access. Yeah. We put all that on my website. And I think last time I did a rough guess, I think there was, it would be interesting to see what your research showed. I think there's about 5,000 tax auctions every year in the United States. I think that's a low estimate, Ted. Do you really? I really do. Wow. You look at Georgia. We've got 159 counties and 164 school systems and somewhere around 900 to 1,000 cities. And all those cities are qualified or, or authorized, I guess is a better word. Yes, they're well, authorized to have a tax sale, and they usually do every year. Wow. So that's a that's an auction a person could – they could just learn about city auctions, and they could, they could uh, have a nice income from that. You could, but remember, if you're in Georgia and you buy one at a city auction, you've got to go pay off the county taxes and the Board of Education taxes. Okay. So they might not be having a county auction. They're having a city one first. And when you buy the city one, you'll automatically – will you automatically pay those taxes or it would just – No, be a you don't automatically. You've got to go to the courthouse and get the information and pay it off. Wow. I bet people don't It works the other way too. If you go yeah. to the county auction and you buy a property and the property is located in the city, then you've got to go to city hall and pay off the taxes there. It's not automatic. Wow. That's one of the rules. You have wow. got to know the rules to be successful. That's for sure. That's for sure. Wow. So this is really interesting. When did you buy your first one? Two or three auctions later? Or how'd that work The out? next, very next auction. Oh, yeah. Okay. Found out. We got the notices in the paper, and I started looking. And I went and looked at some houses because it's here in my community. I just got in my truck and drove around and looked. And I saw one, which is, this is amazing. It's about four blocks from my house. No and kidding. I went and looked at it, and it was empty. And the guy who had owned it 
was doing work on it when he was arrested. I know that, too, because I run the newspaper and I run the arrest reports. He was in jail and going to be there for quite a while. I said, here's a good investment opportunity. (laughs) And this one was great. Oh, I love this. This is a great story. It's a two-story house. It's 3,000 square feet. It's made out of what we call heart of pine lumber, which is really old pine trees, really firm, really heavy-duty stuff, beautiful, just gorgeous wood. Oh, it's built to last. What do you mean, built to last? Yes, it's built to last, and it's raw wood inside. It's just with clear varnish on it. Oh, my God, it was so beautiful. When I bought the house... My daughter went with me, looked at it, said, Daddy, can we move in here? <laughs> really? <laughs> I oh, said, yeah, know. she wanted to. Yeah. It's like nine bedrooms. She wanted to move upstairs and have the whole upstairs to herself, but she'd have it a required dance some work. On, on Friday yeah. nights, she'd have dancing going on up there. Oh, she could have, yes. Yeah. She loved to dance. So, yeah. yeah, that was possible. Yeah. But it did need some work. And I, I bought the house knowing that it needed work, but oh. I also bought the house expecting, saying, I'm going to buy this thing. And I'm not going to keep it. I'm just going to sell it. That's and right. I did. Good. And here's the even better part on this one. I sold it four times. Oh, you mean the people didn't pay you or what? They did not pay me. The first lady I sold it to, she was somebody from out in California. I posted it on Craigslist. I said, owner financing. And she paid me a few thousand dollars and she quit paying. A few months went oh. by and I foreclosed on it and took it back and kept all her money. Wow. So you made 2000 yeah. bucks on a, a, a sale. Good for you. That was great. Well, yeah. You, she, and then the next person came and looked at it and gave me a down payment and disappeared. Oh, my goodness. The oh next person God. came along, gave me a down payment and said, something happened. I believe his wife got laid off or something. He said, I'm sorry, I just can't buy it, but keep the down payment. And I did. So how much did you make on those three down payments? Uh, between the gal who was paying me and the two down payments, I probably made... Somewhere around three thousand oh, dollars, and I had a grand total of about two thousand invested in the property, and I still had the property. I can't even calculate the ROI. What's the return on investment? Over hundred percent. I'm thinking about thirty percent. Oh, you did well. You did really well. Good for you. And then yeah. I sold it again, and the gentleman who bought it this time, he's kept his mortgage payments up, and he will actually pay it out at the end of this year. And when you compute the interest I made on it, he's going to wind up paying me somewhere in the neighborhood of thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! And how much was your investment? Two thousand? Right at two thousand dollars. That's grand total. That's what I spent in the auctions. This That's is the what... kind of dream that people have. People dream about putting up two thousand and making fifteen thousand. This is really good. Really good. You wow. just got to pay attention, do your homework, and know the rules. And so that was in your neighborhood, around, or a place where you've been, been, you've been uh, living for some time. Oh, that's, yes, that's yes, up the street from my house. Oh my! Goodness. And the two thousand dollars covered everything I spent in the auction. Yeah. It covered the other past due taxes. When it came time to foreclose, it covered the foreclosure notice in the newspaper, and it covered the attorney's fees. The attorney's fees are usually higher than that, aren't they? Is that a pretty low attorney's fee or what? That was a fairly low attorney fee. I think they yeah. charge. I think it was like four hundred and fifty dollars to process the foreclosure for me. Oh man, you got it done real cheap. Good for you. Good I did. You. Yeah. It was an they based their cost on what I paid for the house. Oh so when I bought the house I'm living in now, I paid fifty, fifty something thousand for it. So my attorney's fees on that one were a good bit more. Yeah. What do you so sell? they base it on a percentage. I see. Yeah. Let's go back That's, to these auctions because um, okay. uh, I, want, I want to ask you, is it, is it exciting? Is it dull and drab or what, what is it like at, uh, at one of these auctions? It is not an auction like you were anticipating. It is not one of these rapid fire spitting it out and done kind of things. Oh. The gentleman who does our auctions here says he'll read the legal description off, which is just a few lines, and he'll say the opening bid is this amount. Do I have a bidder? Yes, there is a bidder. And then he'll do the next increment. Let's say the opening bid is 500. Do I hear 525? Yes, I've got 525. Will someone bid 550? Yes, I've got 550. I've got 550 going once. I've got 550 going twice. 550 sold to the short round gentleman wearing black suspenders in the corner. That would be me. <laughs> I got it. That would be you. Oh, my goodness. That's a, that's a pretty sane kind of auction. I'll tell you yeah. a quick story about Los Angeles. Uh, they'll have more than a thousand, sometimes 1,500 properties. And that auctioneer is going so fast, people are actually 
one and two behind in their bidding. They, they, he's already moved past their property. They don't even know. They, the hands are going up and the, they have those big bidder cards that sometime are about uh, a foot a foot wide and a foot tall. And you hold yeah. the big bidder cards up and people yelling and screaming. And they'll get, they will never get through all of the properties. So then the next day they have a subsequent auction. But uh, that's why I recommend people go to an auction first right. to see what it's like. Yeah. So the people you that get really them, need to know what you're getting into. Yeah. And what is it? It doesn't cost anything. Everybody's invited, right? They let everybody come yeah, in. Yeah, just to attend is free. Yeah. Now, do they actually, the auctions you went to, do they have them on the courthouse steps or do they have them in a nice air conditioned room? We have it. If the county commissioner is doing, if the county is doing it, it's on the courthouse steps. If the city of Ashburn is doing it, it's held inside City Hall. So it can either be outside or inside. Wow. That's nifty. That's So these are nice auctions to go to. Would they have 10 or 20 properties or would they have 100? How many would they have? No, we wouldn't have 100. My goodness. We probably start the list with around 100, 120 parcels. Uh-huh. And a lot of people, when they see their name in the paper the first time, they freak out and panic and they go pay their taxes immediately. Okay. So the next week, it's usually less. And then by the time we get down to the auction, I think the last county commission auction actually didn't take place because everybody paid off. Boy, that county is going to be awful thankful. They got good people paying their taxes. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, pretty good. All right. So you head off to these auctions and you did a few of those. And yep. give me a little insight into if you don't need any recent ones that you can tell me yes, about. Yes, I bought one two years ago. Oh, yeah. And what was that? Yeah. And believe it or not, this one house is actually a block from where I live. I can stand in my backyard, and if there were not another house in the way, I could see it. My goodness. These are okay houses, right? They certainly were. The first one, I knew it needed work, but it was also that hard of pine lumber that lasts forever. Oh, yeah. And I had a contractor look at it, and he said, Ben, you get in here for twenty, twenty-five thousand $25,000, you got a $100,000 home easy. Whoa, 25000 to fix it. And yeah. those guys always underbid. <laughs> you figure you're looking at investing twenty five thousand dollars, right? And you're going to come out with a hundred thousand dollar home. Nice. Who well, wouldn't do that? Yeah, yeah. If they have the money, if they got the money, if you have the money, yeah. If you don't have the money, you can't do it. Yeah, I get it. Okay, so tell me just about something you did recently. Yeah, I bought a house just literally a block from where I live now. It's a brick right. house. It's got a little more than an acre. The backyard is fenced. When I saw this house come up in the tax sale because of my position in the news in the community, I knew that the owner of the house had died. I called the lady. She had died. I called her daughter, and she explained to me the situation. Her mama had taken out a reverse mortgage on the house, and the reverse mortgage company wanted to foreclose and take the house from them. And they said, then we're just not going to pay the taxes. So they didn't pay the taxes, and it went to the sale. And I got to look at this and said, okay, that's a nice house. I live there, so you can't, in that neighborhood, so you can't say much about the neighborhood. But if I didn't live there, it'd be a much better place to live. <laughs> I don't and, know yeah, well, yeah. and I said, I'm going to make a minimum of 20% on this. I talked to the tax collector at the county courthouse because the county taxes, for some reason, had been paid, but the city taxes hadn't. And I said, what can you tell me about the house? And they told me, they gave me some information. They said they didn't think the tax, the reverse mortgage company was going to pay the taxes off. And I said, what? And they said, they have not responded to anything we sent them. The family actually paid the county taxes. And that's when they got notice that if they paid the city taxes, the mortgage company would take it away from them. So they didn't pay. And I said, I'm looking at minimum 20%. And in this one, a pretty good shot of actually owning the house. Wow. So I did. I went to the city auction and bought it at the city auction. And we went through the 12 month redemption period. The reverse mortgage company actually did call me several times. And I said, okay, you need to send me some information. And they didn't. And I never could get any information to them. And I finally got to the point where I said, all right, fine. And I went to my lawyer and we started the foreclosure paperwork. And they got all their paperwork according to Georgia law. They got all their the, the certified letters, the regular letters, everything they required to get. The redemption period went by. They did not pay me. And I went to the courthouse with my attorney. 
and we filed possession papers in his mind. Wow. Now talk about a couple of things here because you're a pretty sophisticated buyer and the, the newcomers that just came on are saying, what about this redemption period? What was that all about? Nobody ever asked me about the redemption period there, but the redemption period in Georgia is 12 months. Uh-huh. I bought this house. I don't remember the exact amount, but let's say I paid $500 for this house to buy the taxes on it. The mortgage company then had 12 months from the date of that sale to pay me my $500 plus 20% interest. That's called redemption. I got it. Okay. Yeah, if they did not redeem the property, then I had the right to go through a foreclosure process, which meant formal notification. They got certified mail. They got regular mail. We published a notice in the newspaper for four weeks. If they didn't pay me by the end of that four weeks, they lost the house forever. My goodness. And so that doesn't sound like it's a very complicated process. It's not complicated. You go to the auction. Let's back that train up. You get the list of properties. You look at the properties. You look at them and say, here's one I'd like to look at. This is when your homework begins. You start looking into the property as much as you can. Zillow, Z-I-L-W-O dot com is a great resource to help you learn about property if it's not in your community. You can also use Google Earth. You can get street view pictures of the house. You look at it. If necessary, you call the tax collector's office. You tell them the tax sale's coming up, and you ask them if they have any information about the house. Now, you're going to get some that can tell you they don't know anything, and you'll get some that will give you some information about it. But learn as much as you possibly can. That's your homework. Hmm. You've got to know if the house is worth what you're going to invest. You've got to know if the owner is the owner going to redeem the house. If they're going to redeem it, if you're pretty sure you got a lock on it, you're solid, you're good to go. If there's a question of whether or not the owner is going to redeem it, then you got to say, is this house worth what I'm paying? Can I either sell it and make a profit? Can I use it for myself? Or can I rent it out? Good. What? Yeah. Do I have to do any work on it? What's the deal there? But you can get all that information if you just spend a little time researching. I guess the typical person might spend 20 or 30 minutes researching a property maximum. Okay. What was the outcome? You say you spent less than $500. What did you do with that property? Did you sell it or did you? I'm renting it out now. Oh, and how much do you rent it for? 500 a month. Oh, wait a minute. You're telling me you're renting a house in four months time, you're going to get all your money back? That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. I've already made my money back for that matter. So then it's 100% profit thereafter. If yeah, it's 100% profit. profit. You say it's 100% profit. But now, closer. I do have insurance on it, and I do have property taxes i got to pay. And maybe you got a little cleanup or maybe whatever. Yeah. You know, okay. I did have to do some cleanup. Okay, here's the total amount I paid, $1,803.30. That was wow. my total investment into getting that house at the time I took it over. Boy, that's terrific. That's terrific. Yeah, and I'm renting it for 500 a month. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. Yes, you deserve it. Let's take one more minute, and um, I'm running out of time. And when you talk about tax certificates, and you talk Mm -hmm. about getting properties at deed auction, people look at you like you're, are you kidding me? You're making these stories up. What sort of reaction do you get from people when when you tell them these stories? Their eyes pop out of their head. (laughs) That's right. Exactly. Yeah. They say, how did you do that? And I said, look, man, it's this simple. And then I say, I got, I met this guy named Ted Thomas and (laughs) I started reading the things he wrote and I said, yeah, sure. And then I started looking at a little more. I went to my first auction and I said, Ted's onto something here. And then I went back and read some more of your stuff. I learned some more about what I need to know and what I need to do. Went to my second auction and bought a house and I said, this man knows what he's talking about. Ted (laughs) is the man. Thank you. You need to listen to him. Oh man, that's good stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the front of the interview. That was so good. (laughs) (laughs) What a great job. What a great job. You're the best. You are the best. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email info at tedthomas.com. Again, that's info at tedthomas.com. And within 24 to 48 hours, you will have your answer. See you guys next week.